and those boards there they put between where they're drying those boards out. Oh yeah, there. stickers. Yeah, yeah. Just that's, sticker boards. That's all those are. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see that. Boy, this hogs have all been through oh, here yeah. too. Holy cow! Look at that. It looks like it's plowed up. And you, we can hear shooting. We know what it was, but these woods are open anyway, so they come in. Feds come in. Oh, they did. They caught my granddad. Anyway, my dad, he, they didn't get him. So if I sold mine for a million dollars, I would get six hundred seventy thousand. Just out of curiosity, I put my house up for sale down there. Everybody that come and looked at it, what about that lake? Mm -hmm. What's it going to do? Mm -hmm. So it's it's already decreased the value of my place. I live in rural Montana, and I've always wondered, with as big as Texas is, does it still have places that are as rural as this? When I found out that even in East Texas, right below Oklahoma, there's places that are backwoods where there is very, very few people on the roads, and I just felt at home, and there's kind of the tragedy that's happening down there with there's a, a lot of reservoirs going in that are taking land out of production, out of ag production, but they're also taking private property away from citizens and giving it to the government. Today I'm going to show you a video that I made when I was down in Texas with Casey and he inter introduced me to a friend of his named Jeffrey and we got to hear some fantastic stories about how his family handed this land down to him and how he's about to lose it all. Yeah. Jeffrey, this is Trinity. How's it going? Ah, nice to meet you. Good Jeffrey to meet Davis. you. Come in. Go ahead. Come in. Ah, so, so you're the a wood guy too. Love yeah. it. Yeah, and he built this house himself too. Me, Did my you? My dad and my yeah. kids, my sister's helped a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we built it in 2017. Okay. They're handy. My family can't build a dog house and they're building a house. Right, right. Well, what what is this here? What'd you do with the... That is... Uh, off of a barn or something? or No. So, down there around Foreman, uh, somewhere where they stack, it's a sawmill. Yeah. And those boards there, they put between where they're drying those boards out. Oh, yeah. There. Stickers. Yeah. Yeah. Just that's, sticker boards. That's all those are. Okay. Oh, yeah, I done. see that. Yeah. And there's a reason they're in here. Why's that? I got them cheap. <laughs> oh yeah, right. I was gonna say they should be should be cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we, I took down a uh, cabin at South Lake. You got the cedar. Oh, you did. Okay. Uh, oh so. yeah, cedar cedar boards. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this this old uh, sheet iron. Uh, we had an old barn that uh, at my mom and dad's old place. We tore the barn down and used the sheet iron for that and then ceilings. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, from the from the old barn. Oh hay barn, yep. Yeah. So it's a lot of uh, a lot of family a lot of family stuff in here, huh? Yeah. And and your railing is is woven wire. Yeah. With what what are those posts? Those made out of? Uh, cedar. Cedar? Mm-hmm. Yeah, old cedar posts. Now up down here, um, you were saying they use something else for posts a lot of times. Bodar. Bodar. Yeah. Bodar. Yeah, that's what yeah. we use the fences. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So up north, they, we, we always use cedar because we don't have bodar or, or oak. Either one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what was your name again? Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. And you're related to Eddie. Eddie Wayne. Yes. <laughs> He he took a minute to, to uh, admit really? that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Are these cedar? Yeah. Okay. They yeah, when, when, like... they, when he done it, they uh, had a guy gonna build the whole thing for me. I, he had metal post here. I just like the idea of the. Yeah, I like them too. Just the cedar, just that's the look I wanted. They kind of look like juniper, too. Yeah. You know what? You, you've seen if juniper. I'm not mistaken, they're kin. I think. Are, I think are they kin to juniper? I think they are kin to a juniper. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. We've had that conversation up north one time. Because it looks similar. We have juniper all over the place, and they are hard. Mm -hmm. They are heavy hardwood, but they don't ever grow very far. So, yeah, yeah that's a big old oak tree over there too. Goodness yeah. gracious. That was there when I was a kid. And then what do you what do you got here? That's a corny dog trailer. A corn dog trailer. What? Or do, what do you take this around? And yeah, I'm taking it tomorrow to school. Are you? To the FFA. Uh, to school? So you, to school. Yeah. I'll, you got it all stocked up and everything? Yep, yep. And then you just sell? I'll cut corny dogs and 
Fried Snickers, Oreos. Oh yeah. Funnel cakes. Yeah. Do you go to county fairs or something? Yeah, we go to different different events, rodeos, little different rodeos. And stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. <clears throat> So this place here, this has been in your family for a while, or? This one's been in my family for about 80 years. Okay. The place I'm going to up here has been, we've been over 100 years. My great granddad and him. Okay. Bought it. So this has all been logged over here at some Yeah, point? they started thinning it. That's my sister's. Well, that's your sister's yeah. place? Okay. So they started, they didn't get finished with it. Pine went down, so they, they stop so you're gonna leave it leave it stand for a while yeah. until pine goes back up yeah i see yeah she has 160 acres cuts through there of just pine plantation okay. so what do you do you do for a living do you do that i uh got cows of my own yeah and then uh i work for woodland farms i tend to their cows for them down here where y'all were at yesterday okay parts bluff okay Casey, that's just that's just kind of average ropers. There's we've right. had some good ropings here. Yeah. That it's just. Mm. But this was my dad's old house. This is your dad's. Yeah, so I gave I you? gave it to my son. Yeah, he he passed away in 2020. So where where where'd you grow up? Right here, right, right there. Yeah, that's where you grew up. Okay. Yep. Is this a hog dog here? Dad, he's supposed to be. See that cut on his shoulder? Yeah, I see that. <laughs> My dad, we logged. He cut his ties. T ties? Yeah. We told him they make like cross railroad? ties stuff out of. So they're yeah, they're railroad ties. You cut yeah, but you cut okay. logs in eight foot six, and that's they're tie logs, what they call sure. them. Sure. So uh, on a hardwood? Yeah. Okay. We we logged, and then uh, we sprig Bermuda grass which is not much here anymore, it's Bahia. But we dug sprigs and went to other places and sprigged grass for people. So what does that mean? What is so spring? you got a machine that comes in here and it uh, digs up the roots. Okay. And you put them in a trailer with dirt on them and then you take them to another place, you got a machine, you throw them on that machine with a pitchfork and then you go and it, it's got little plows and stuff, you gotta plow the ground up but it puts the roots back in the ground over there. So you're you're taking your grass and putting it, but when you dig it, it sifts enough back out. It doesn't take all of yours. It sure. still comes so back. Grow, but Bermuda grow grass back. spreads and runs anyway. I see. Okay. So we done that. Uh, we built hay for the public. Since I was little, we went from square hay to I remember when they started round, round baling hay. Uh huh. So then we, uh, we round bale hay. So uh, we done everything to make a living. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I love the deep dark woods, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I like going horses. I just had shoulder surgery and I'm not riding yet, so. Yeah. That's why you yeah. didn't see me yesterday. They had me feet and everything yesterday. Yeah. My dad just had shoulder surgery too. He was on the phone with me. Yeah. And he's tagging a calf. And all of a sudden I heard, oh, he got run over by a heifer. Oh. Yeah. Oh. You did? Yeah, that was it. Oh. I'll tell you about that, Gary. Broke. Yeah, you don't tell me that, Joel. What was that? Yeah, it was May. Well, so we're talking recently. May a year ago. So I was, I was just 
trotting, I roped a cow, I was tied on, and I eased the slack to her. Anyways, the little colt, he stopped, turned sideways, and the slack wasn't out yet, so she jerked me down, and it broke my shoulder. And uh, Jerked the whole horse down? Yeah, a little young oh. horse, weighed about 800 pounds. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he might have weighed 1,000, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it jerked the whole horse over. On and the, the yeah, and then the, the end of the yeah, and the, and the bad thing is they had built a uh, like an eight wire with that little gaucho yeah. love wire. Uh huh. They built a trout for the cows to hold them up in, and uh, way was going down that fence. It jerked that horse and just pulled me up. And a T post is what stopped me in the underneath that fence. Oh no. Yeah. Ah. It wasn't a pretty sight. No. So that probably hurt. And they had to cut my rope to get me loose. Oh, to yeah. get Because she was still, so my horse could get up off of me. Uh-huh. Yep. That's a cistern, meaning yes. that, so that, look, can I look at that? Yeah. So this goes down to, oh, this is what, the, it's basically a tank. Yeah, it's right. where they got the water at. Yeah. So a cistern is like a big tank. They would have to have all of their water delivered for their use, and they would put it in this tank and then use it out of there. Oh, sure there's enough. Bricked. Yep, there's brick down there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you mean it bailed out? Well, it, it, it made a, like a bubble. So you got your little neck, and then it went down so far, and then it, then it bailed out. It's oh, wider. Oh, yeah, it bailed, it's bailed it's out. Big, big, yeah, yeah, it's bigger. It's yeah. okay. I can't understand. Sometimes yeah. I can't understand Texan, so I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking bailed out, not bailed out. Yeah. So I was bailed. trying to figure out what yeah. bailed out meant, but. Yeah. Belled out, yes. So it was bigger down there at the bottom. Yeah, at the bottom. Right. Yeah. My grandkids, my daughter's getting this from me. And what? Her kids will get it, so it's six generations. Yeah. Right here. We used to dig sprigs here. This used to be really good Bermuda grass. So oh. uh, our sprig digger was, uh, it wasn't a big one. It was, you pulled it behind the tractor. You pull the trailer that it does in behind it. They have some that are bigger. You drive the trailer beside them. Okay. So you can go uh -huh. forwards and backwards and kind of move your load. The ones that unload in the front, somebody has to be in there throwing it to the back. That was me. I see. From when I was about eight years old. To... So my mom, she was real protective of me. This old, there was another one of these wells right over there somewhere got covered up. So there's brick in the ground where that, you seen what was down uh -huh. in there. Yeah. So when you go over it, that digger would hit that brick and it'd, throw, it'd chunk it up in rocks and come out. Oh. So it hit me in the head one day. Oh, no. One of them did. And it was sharp and it cut me. So my mom threw a fit about it. So our neighbor had moved in down there and he'd been military and uh, Air Force. So he, I got just a thing. So he brought me a uh, aviator helmet that had those little shades. <laughs> <laughs> so daddy's, we got you fixed up. So I had to, I had to wear that. Yeah. When, all, we dig all ice, when you were digging springs, so you didn't get hit with a rock anymore, huh? <laughs> yeah, he just had to know my dad. Yeah, that's right. He didn't really care about protecting me. He was protecting his marriage. <laughs> yeah, hey, I've been there. I've been there. I'm like, hey, your mom's going to kill me if you do that, that so don't do it. That's it. Yep. <laughs> do you hunt hogs with them or coons? Yeah, or hogs what? and cows. We work oh, cows, cows with them. Yeah, they're okay. cow dogs. But yeah. My son, he's into hog hunting, so that's... But you can see where the hog's been rooting out here. Yeah, I see that. See all the mess that they... Yeah, this used to be a pretty smooth little pasture. Yeah, all the holes they dig up. Man. It's amazing that they're as hard as they are to hunt with as much evidence as you see of them being around. Yep. I mean, there's got to be tons of these things around. Everywhere I go, there's big old dug up patches of yeah but they're kind of hard to find they must yeah. squirrel back in there to thick stuff huh yeah they run like deer yeah yeah this boy this hogs have all been through oh, here yeah. too holy cow look at that it looks like it's plowed up how many siblings did you have i have four sisters four sisters all sisters all older than me yep. wow Yep. That was probably a growing up experience, yeah. huh? My mom had uh, 10 siblings. Yeah. So we got a big family. I'll bet. My dad, he had, there was, there's five of my dad's bunch too, so. Okay. We have a huge family. 
And you do you have kids on the place or? Yes, my kids son. My son lives at my dad's old house, and my other two kids live in Rosalie. My two daughters. Okay. Do you get many vacations? No. No. <laughs> you don't go on many vacations, huh? No, sir. Do you? Very seldom. Very seldom. You know, most most people in agriculture make their living from agriculture. Don't don't do a whole lot of vacationing. So this is an old whiskey still. Oh, What's left right of it. here? Okay. So you see one barrel left there. Yeah. Oh, so it's on a hill. It's on a hill? Yeah, it was on a hill. This used to all be woods. Oh, okay. It was big open so, woods. So this was all Yeah, it hadn't, it hadn't here. been cut. So uh -huh. it was big trees that you could ride through good and, and it's open. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. And a little knoll here. Yeah, so they put a, so right, right over there, that pond wasn't that big. It's not real big now, but. So what they would do is uh, they'd dig them a little pond where they have water, and then set their steel up and run it. I see. Right here, and this was back when? This was about 1970. Okay. Because I was just a little kid. I see. <laughs> and uh, my dad and granddad were running it. And uh, me and mom were up there feeding, putting hay out to cows, square hay out to cows. And you, we could hear shooting. And we know what it was, but these woods are open anyway, so they come in, the feds come in. Oh, they did. And uh, they caught my granddad. And uh, anyway, my dad, he, they didn't get him. He come back and uh, to get my dad, to get my granddad out. So they cut him a deal because they couldn't prove he was here. So then a little plea deal and uh, give him uh, probation instead of arresting him. I see. So, so they put your grand granddad away. No, they that was a deal my dad made. He oh, I see. Probation and everything for. Uh, to get him out. I see. So that so, was illegal back then? Yes. Oh. And then that's the last time he made it. Yeah. He quit. He quit that. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, nope, don't want to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> he quit. Must have been worth some money, huh? Uh, yeah, they done good, yeah. I guess. Apparently. Must have been worth some. Uh, but you can ride through the woods and lots of places around all this whole area and find old, old barrels and stuff. Most of them you'll find They'll, you'll see the barrels, they they put dynamite, they blew them up or took axes and they'd chop holes I mean, so you couldn't use them again. I see. You mean the feds did? Yeah. I see. Okay. You, you'll find those spots where they, they may not caught the guys there, but they'd come in and just bust the steel up. Right. So they ruined their stuff so mm -hmm. they couldn't make it anymore. Mm -hmm. I see. That wasn't even that long ago. Well, now it's a long time ago, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Dang. 1970 would be 50. Years ago. 54 years 54 ago. Years 54 years ago. Good like grief. That. Yep. Time is flying there, Casey. Yep. <laughs> yeah, because I was about five years old when it happened. Okay. And I'm 59, so. Huh. Amazing, but the more stories that you hear, the more people that you get to know, and the more stories you get to hear about what happened here and the, and the history and the family, and, and then to think of that they're wanting to just take right. this away or force you off, it, it is so sad. See, it gets deeper the more you get into this, yes, you know? Yes. The more people you meet, the more you get to understand how many people and families it's gonna impact. It's, yes. it's really sad. Yes. <clears throat> right here, which was a different deer stand there. Yeah. This is where I killed my first deer. Oh, I see. When I was little, even on the old the old old homestead yeah. part, huh? Yeah. Huh. So. Uh, yeah, because that oak's been there for a while. Yeah, but that that wasn't. We had another. It was a. We built them out of. Uh, you take, some little trees. About like so. Yeah. And cut them, and stand them up, and take some boards, and nail to the tree. So you had that like this. So it was a platform. Oh yeah. That's platform what we used stand. To build. Yeah. yeah. So wooden stand. Mm -hmm. That's what we built. Okay. And it was right in here. I couldn't tell you which tree. It may not be here. It may probably fail by now. But, sure. But yeah. anyway, it was right in this area because we looked on this hill. Like I said, this was more opening. 
so you could see further. Right. Because so this was open. Yeah, open we're talking here. You know, forty-five years ago. Okay. Yeah. How old are those? All those short, oh. this small trees here. They're they're not that old. They're not that old. No. Like ten years or. Yeah, some of them are not that. Some of them not that old. I, mean, I would say this one here is probably maybe eight or ten years old. This one here. Yeah. Okay. So this is about eight or ten. So years. We've been just letting it grow up. We don't use it for anything. So sure. We'll just let it. Yeah. Just going back to timber. Yeah. And you got a hog trap over here? Yes, sir. You can see the hog bend right here. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah, I think they got some hog issues too. Yeah. Mm hmm. So, how do you catch them in this thing? You raise that door up. We haven't used it in a couple years. I haven't, or a year. You raise this up. You put a, we put a stick under it to hold it up. Okay. We just put wire back here and you X. Just like baling wire, you yeah. just exit and put your feed back here. And they come to eat the feed, they trip the wire, pulls, the, pulls, stick, door pulls the stick out and this, this around, door right, right here right drops. Yep. Yep. Drops down behind them. Yep. All right. They'll have this up here or they'll climb right out. Climb right yep. out of there. Yep. You don't put a, something up yep. there, they'll climb right out. I see. Yep. Huh. You think a little fat hog couldn't do that? But right. Climb right out. Yep. So the, how many could can you catch in something like this? Uh, you can catch twenty or so. Most time you won't catch two or three. You'll yeah. catch a bunch of little pigs and stuff. Yeah. But you'll catch two or three big ones. Sometimes you'll catch eight or ten. Huh. Lots of times the way I'll do it is I won't set it. I'll get them going into eating. Oh. You so they just get, so they leave get to where it they, up yes, and so they get to where they run in to get the food. You catch more that way than you do if you just, because they're always kind of most times spooky. Right. But if they get to where they're used to going in, then they go in and start fighting for it so you can catch a few more. I see. Yeah, get them nice and comfortable and, huh. But buying land here kind of goes downhill a little bit with the thought of the fact that it may go underwater and be. It, yeah, and, and, and here's the thing that I don't know, y'all may have heard, so let's say, I've got close to 500 acres. Let's say if I wait till the lake comes in to sell it, I'm going to try to get something closer so I don't got to move out of the country. Everybody's going to be trying to get that same block I'm trying to get it. So it's going to exactly. cost four or five times more. Uh huh. So if you wait, if you don't do it now and you wait, you're going to pay more for it. Right. But you don't want to sell yours anyway. But then I've got to do some research. So it costs 33% taxes. On the sale? If I, so if I sold mine for a million dollars, I would get 670,000. Right. Instead of a million. Mm -hmm. But then I've got to go find some place else to buy, build a house. That's not a, that's not a lot to go find another place to buy and build a right. house. That's, that doesn't... And then, if you're going to go close here, it's going to cost more because there's not everybody. Everybody's wanting it, so then you're going to have to. Are you going to have to move a whole new place and start completely over, mm -hmm. new whole new country, whole I mean, new area? Yeah, whole new area, exactly. Yeah. So, it's kind of disheartening. I mean, oh, it's totally disheartening. I mean, that's that's really disheartening. You know, you're going to be forced off of somewhere, mm -hmm. and you're not going to have the money to go buy what anything equivalent right and build a house i mean it's... and the other thing people don't understand is is uh i mean you can get over sentimental but i mean that if you're just going to try to find a place up around bogota it's going to take 100 acres of this at least to buy 20 acres there yes yeah yeah without a house that's yes. just the land yeah. just land just yeah land. that's not counting house mm -hmm. that's so uh so somebody could potentially if they wanted to move, and the problem, one of the problems I just thought of when I was at the table with those guys is the fact that, so let's say somebody's seeing this coming, they're like, well, I, I want to sell it. But somebody coming in here to buy it is seeing the same thing. You're like, we're going to lose it again. So, last, almost a year ago, I guess, I've thought about it and prayed about it. and done it. So, just out of curiosity, I put my house up for sale down there. Just so... If it brings good money, I can get me another place. Not all this land, just that spot. It had enough value. On its own, yeah. So I could sell it, and I could buy another place 
so I wouldn't be in this predicament. Everybody that come and looked at it, what about that lake? Mm -hmm. What's it going to do? Mm -hmm. So it's it's already decreased the value of my place. Right. And the desirability because it, it's... So, so I'm going to have to sell all of my... Mine's free and clear, paid for. So what it's going to put me to doing at 60 plus whenever they do this is trying to find another place, not this much, find another place and get a house on it and probably have to borrow money. I'll be in debt to be living my senior glory years. Yeah, for the same thing or less than you had before. Yes. Without the family heritage and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's not count. That's just monetarily. That's not counting. It's just monetary. And that's something... So you can't blame somebody if they do that, if they choose to do that. Right. Right? But you're not choosing to do that. Exactly. You have a... You have... There's something hanging over your head mm -hmm. that you have to do that, mm -hmm. in, in a way. Mm -hmm. If it comes in, you're forced to do something and... Yeah. What a what a devastating thing. It's like taking the, somebody who's built the American dream and something that people right. want and envy and then taking it away from you. Well, as one of our officials here, I'm not going to name names, but I... Uh, Saw her a couple years ago. With they had meetings about this, and I told her I said I want to come by and look at your house. I'm thinking about buying it, and she said, "Do you know where I live?" And I said, "I know exactly where you live." And she said, "My house is not for sale." I said, "I'm gonna come by and look at it and try to buy it, and uh, mm -hmm. tell you what I'll mm -hmm. give for it." Exactly. And she yeah. said, "My house is not for sale," and I said, "Mine's not either." Yeah. And, I mean, hello. She's, yeah, but she she's not she doesn't live where it's going to be affected. Mm -hmm. So hers is not for sale. Mine's not for sale. But if they do this, they'll take it. It won't matter. It's, it doesn't have to be for sale. So that's people don't really get that. That's that's, that's a very good way to put that. Very good way. So they're just wanting to take it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's nothing we can do. I mean, you know, if if, if it comes into a deal, there's nothing we can do about it. Right. So which we've worked, my mom worked with my dad. I was talking about all the stuff we, we, we sprigged, we logged, we built hay. And when I say we, she was a big, as big a part or a bigger part than my dad was in that. She ran it, she drove hay trucks, she hauled square hay, she cut hay, she built hay. She worked in logwoods. She died in October, 1983 patching fence with me on one, one of the other places up here. She died mm. on the place. Died on, on the place while she was working. Yes. Mm. So it does have a little sentimental value. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they want, she died trying to provide for her family and keep for us. And then somebody else can come in and just take it. That's just not, Yeah. not I, the American way. No, it isn't. It shouldn't be. So it shouldn't be. I, the more I look into this, the more I, you know, I'm su surprised that I'm in America, mm -hmm. right, and not some other country that doesn't doesn't actually agree with personal rights or something. Right, right. personal property, private property. Here. So like this this right here. Yeah. This is a year. Yeah. So I just for those of you that are watching, I, Montana doesn't have this. So in a year without brush hogging, which is basically what? Like a huge lawnmower, right? For That has yeah. to chop up wood and yeah. everything. So you have these trees grow up like that much in a year. These are just missed spots. So they grow up, what, five and a half, six feet? Yeah. In a year. That's incredible to me. Yeah. Most people probably doesn't doesn't make any difference to them because they're probably used to it. But yeah. to me, that's, that's amazing. Hog, more hog. <laughs> yeah. We well, got some corrientes or guys, part yeah. longhorn, part corrientes. We have that roping, so we've always raised. Okay. We try to rope heifers. We get done roping, and we turn them out for cows. Right. Then you put beef bulls on them. You put beef bulls on. Yeah. Them. Okay. So they're crossed. Then the yeah, calves so, are crossed. Yeah. So they bring more. Yeah. I've been started doing it the last couple of years because if you're just selling the little corriente longhorn calves, they don't sell very good, huh? Yeah. No. I would bet. If you're not roping them, you don't get anything out of them. Right. But we run black bulls and Charlotte bulls and get pretty good calves out of them. 
So how do you get? So then you have to buy the Corrientes again, right? Or the, well, I I was keeping some keep that I was few? breeding. Okay. I got Corriente bull. I kept. I'd keep some and breed about fifty a year. Okay. To, for my ropings, but the last year I haven't done as much ropings. So I didn't breed any back this year. I see. I actually sold my bull. So Corrientes are. Why do they use those for roping? They grow grow the right size of horn, or what is it? They just grow a bigger base horn. Oh, okay. Honestly. The ropers prefer them. I don't know why I'm a roper also. Prefer the what? Prefer, prefer the Corrientes. Oh, prefer the Corrientes, okay. <laughs> but for years, all we roped was Longhorns. Ah. And so I started getting the Corriente thing, and I could break 20 Corrientes in and 20 Longhorns in at the same time. And you would have just as many go bad of either or, and they were just as good to rope as, I never saw any difference in them, but the ropers got it in their mind the Corrientes are better. I see. So, <laughs> any business, that's just what you got to kind of. Yeah, if you're going to do, if you're going to have roping cows, then. Exactly. Yeah. So, for you, where do you go with these? Do you, do you just do ropings or? Yeah, I, I put on, I used to put on ropings uh, here and like indoor arenas, and church things, uh, little, just little associations, just different things like that. We've given saddles and trailers, buckles. Oh, so now do you do people just like pay you to use their cattle or? We do that some. We lease lease cattle out for ropings. Uh, mostly we'll have a have ropings here or we'll lease a place like uh, uh, indoor arena. We'll lease an indoor arena and have ropings there. We'll haul them to it. And people will pay for entry fees. Yeah, they, they to, come to just, roll. Yes. Okay, gotcha. And these are Charlet here, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's a black. That's an Angus cow and a, with a Charlet okay. cross cap. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, have you ever heard of the movie Home from the Hills? Uh, no. Uh -uh. Okay, it was. Uh, I have to look see I was in it, but uh, it was a movie back in the, that was made in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. It was made down here and uh, over at Boxona. And uh, it was about a rich man and he had an illegitimate son that he never was claiming was his. And uh, anyway, they, was, they took, I forget the whole movie, but they, the big hog hunt, the, the illegitimate son lived, the house they used was right here. Oh, was it? That was my mom and dad's house they used that. It showed it two or three times in the movie. Their headquarters was over there at uh, Joe Ed Russell's old place. Mm -hmm. That's where his big house was. It's where it showed their, it was a nice house. And then they come down here to Sulphur Bottom to hunt. And there's an old iron bridge down there, what they used to cross. It showed that in the movie. And uh, my dad and them and some of his cousins from across the creek at, over there, they caught the hog for them to use. Oh, they you, did. You can see in the movie where the hogs hobbled running at them I and stuff. I see. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, that movie, Home from the Hills, look it up. I will. I'll look it uh, up. Home from the Hills, Robert okay. Mitchell. Robert Mitchum was in it. Oh, you remember it, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Maybe, I don't remember making it. Maybe a George yeah. Brapard. Yeah. I think he was in it. I'm yeah, not Robert sure. Robert Mitchum was the man. Robert Mitchum was, yes, because my dad, get, the lady was, my dad yeah. gets so mad because my mom, she just was in love with Robert Mitchum. I she, see. She always I talk see. about <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, but that was, that right happened here, right huh? here. Yeah. Huh? Boy, I appreciate it, man. That was a think, yeah. That was a pretty cool story, too. Pretty yeah. cool stories. Yeah. And seeing your place, and I, I really appreciate you helping people understand, yeah. get to understand what's. But that's, there's so many that that tell it, and they go to getting mad. I, mean, I think a lot of people at Dallas, they just need to know or around everywhere. They're not trying to put anybody out. They just don't know what's going on. They don't. I don't think they do. So. We're going to try to help them understand. We've talked with everybody. It's the same thing. They don't, the people don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the ones that, that we do inform are totally against. Yeah. They, they don't, yeah. you know. Because they just. They don't, they don't know. 
No.